What really would have happened if evolution was true? Evolutionists look at the world around us and they see thousands upon thousands of different types of fully developed fish and birds and land animals, and they take it for granted that it all functions, and all these animals exist. But what would life on this planet be like if life really evolved on the Earth? Fact. The odds clearly show that this spectacular event could barely even happen one time. Okay, I'll agree with that. Any sufficiently long series of relatively unpredictable events has an extremely low chance of happening twice. If you flip a coin a billion times, you're guaranteed to get some combination, even though the odds of getting any specific combination are incredibly, unbelievably low. Therefore, if life really evolved from nothing, then all we should have living on this planet would be only one viable kind of life form, and it's food supply! So wait, the spectacular event you're talking about is not the modern variety of species? But the probability of each specific species existing, like the probability of a tiger species existing is one in a gajillion, and then the probability of a crocodile species existing is another one in gajillion. I'm having a hard time figuring out what the author of this book actually thinks the theory of evolution states. Does he think it's the same thing as spontaneous generation, species just magically appearing out of nowhere? Because that's about the only kind of spectacular event I can imagine that has anything to do with the variety of species and requiring that only one species exist. And what is a kind of life form? Is it maybe in reference to abiogenesis? And the idea of all life coming from one initial starting point? Because in that case it is one kind of life form. I honestly just don't know what to make of this. It could just mean so many different things. Maybe someone in the comments has a better idea of what this is supposed to mean, because I honestly have too many ideas to have any real idea. One kind, that's all. But in reality, even that one evolved life form would never make it at all without God's help. Notice we're on page 25. Page 26, part 12, Adam and Noah, etc. Okay, I guess that last statement is just going completely unexplained. Why wouldn't that life form make it without God's help? Seems like all the other ones are making it perfectly fine without God's help. What are you talking about? Alright then, let's take a look at Adam and Noah, etc. Let me clarify something about this 10% brain thing. By that he's referring to all the places in the book where he's referring to people only using 10% of their brains. You know, that old nonsense. I'm not locking in that number as a literal fixed number, I'm using it as an example of the fact that our mental capabilities are nowhere near perfect. So let me define perfect here for you. There were giants in the earth in those days. Genesis 6-4. Okay, don't know what that has to do with perfect. Adam lived 930 years and may have been around 15 feet tall. Then mankind deteriorated. Noah at 12 feet and now we're down to half of that. Don't know where it said that in the Bible and don't know where all those 12 foot tall human corpses are from the flood, but okay. Note. If you doubt this is possible, how is it there are pygmies and dwarfs? How does there being pygmies and dwarfs relate to there being giants in the past? Do you think that pygmies and dwarfs are the next step of humanity as we get more and more corrupt? Is it supposed to be a continuum from giants on down and we'll just keep getting smaller until we're like a little chess piece? And Noah was thousands of years before Jesus, so Noah was about this big. <laughs> There's little Noah with his long hair and his great big beard. He looks like a glorified chess piece. And what does it have to do with the 10% brain? This whole book is a non sequitur. I don't even understand what points you're trying to make because you're not making any points. Fact. The fossil record shows that everything grew larger before the flood. All the plants were bigger, all the animals, and this would also apply to mankind. Now the reason behind the giant Noah interpretation that I've heard was that his cubit would be longer and so the ark would be bigger and he'd be able to fit more animals on and it makes it a little less ridiculous. If all the animals are larger too, it makes it more ridiculous. Especially if you're looking at the fossil record and saying everything was gigantic, like giant sloths and dinosaurs and giant crocodiles and giant dragonflies. And this still has nothing to do with the brain. Along with his greater size, Adam's brain was also 
perfect when God made him. Well, finally it gets to the brain. That means that Adam and Eve had perfect photographic memories and their mental capacity was capable of storing and accessing the information they would have gathered throughout all eternity. I really don't get where any of this is in the Bible. I mean, I've read Genesis, and uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't say any of this in there. I'm pretty sure it doesn't even hint it. So you're just putting words in God's mouth, telling him that he did things that he never actually said he did. God gonna be mad. That's why I say even Einstein was down to only 10%. Hmm, maybe the rest of us are down to something more like 2 or 3%. Or maybe less. Hmm, maybe some of us. Anyway, before I go, I promised this to Integral Math in the comments in the first episode. So here it is.